Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive dev tutorial. In this lesson we're going to learn how to play sound effects on the console. Along with the music, graphics and the animation, sound effects are one of the things that can really bring a game world and the characters within it to life. I think Michael Jackson's Moonwalker here is a really good example. While I don't think they have any gameplay functionality, these little moves of Michael here where he does a little whoop, I think it really adds a bit to his character, it really makes you feel like you're playing as Michael Jackson. And we even have environmental sound effects such as the piano here. Again, it doesn't have really any function in terms of the gameplay, but it really um, helps to uh, create the illusion that there's really a piano in this world when you're treading on it and it's making all this noise. There are also a relatively high number of good voice samples too, which is really impressive considering the very small size of the ROM. Due to the limitations of the sound driver they're using for this game, some of these samples does make the music cut out at times, but the problem isn't as bad as in Golden Axe for example. Although very simple in terms of game design and gameplay, I think Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is still a really good game, it's a very nostalgic game for me, and I think it provides a good example of what sound effects can add to a game. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see how to code sound effects in your own game. We'll also be looking at the limitations of the sound driver we're using. And finally, we'll have a look at what kind of factors you have to take into account when implementing sound effects into your overall game design. This will be the starting point of our code here and as always Patreon supporters can go over and they can download the full source code for this tutorial. I'll very quickly go through the starting code now and it's basically what we did uh, uh, maybe a year or so back when we did the um, how to code button controls. So we have this joy event and we have push button A, B and C just so we can play the different sound effects. Now pay attention here we got we're using if statements no else if because if we use else if then it means that you first will check whether button A is pressed then whether button B is pressed and whether button C is pressed but we want the option to play A, B and C at the same time all three sound effects so we're just doing three if statements no else if. For today's lesson I've chosen these three random sound effects and they're very easy to find so just search for SFX download and I'm sure you'll be able to find some yourself. Let's go ahead and have a listen. Adolkin! 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 Street Fighter voice is always classic and I thought it would be fun to try a Street Fighter 3 one. Rise from your grave. Rise from your grave. I don't think I need to explain where that sound effect comes from, although it comes from the arcade version, not the Mega Drive one. And since we've already featured Moonwalker today, I thought I'd take a sound effect from the arcade version just to see how it sounds on the Mega Drive. So those were the original sound files and bear that in mind when we play back on the Mega Drive. For example, the Rise From Your Grave sound effect will have that scratchy static sound, but that's due to the original sound effect and not necessarily due to the sound driver. Okay, so the first step to coding these sound effects is going to be to upload them into our ROM and to do that we're going to go to resources.res. First of all, we're going to write WAV in capital letters because it's going to be a WAV file, so make sure that any files you use are this type of file. The next step will be to give that particular sound effect a name, so name it whatever you want. For me, I'm going to name this SFX underscore Hadouken. Now we have to tell the system which file we're using, so as usual, open up the quotation marks and simply type or copy over the name of the file in here, and don't forget the .wav. The final piece of information we need to give the system is which sound driver we're using. Today we're going to be using the original XGM driver, although the XGM2 driver is available, it's still in quite an early state at the moment, plus of course it loses one of the um, sound channels, so I think for today it's best to focus on the XGM original driver, but the process of doing sound effects for the XGM2 should be quite similar, so I'm sure you can work out by yourself if you do want to use the XGM2 driver. Now I'm going to add the other two sound effects in the same way and I'll meet you back in the main.c. Within SGDK, each sound effect in the game is given its own unique number. The range of numbers available are 0 to 255, but 0 to 63 is reserved for the music, so in reality we can choose between 64 and 255. This gives a total number of 192 sound effects that we can have in any one game, which should be more than enough. We're going to go ahead and define those numbers now at the top of main.c, just before where it says int main. While we could just use numbers directly within our code, trying to keep track of which 
number is assigned for example to rise from your grave and which is designed to have dogging could be very confusing for us as coders so what we're going to do is we're going to use this define method so remember we i think we've used this before in the lesson on animations we do hashtag define then we give a certain name that we want to replace a number with so in this case we're going to do the uh, you can call it whatever you want, I'm going to call mine sfx underscore, then uh, sf3 hadouken, and then that's going to be number 64. We're starting this at 64 because remember 0 to 63 are reserved for the music. Just to reiterate, the definition we're given here is for the number of the um, sound effect within the game. Previously in resources.res what we defined was the files themselves, so as we do the functions to play the sound effects this will become much more clear. I'm now going to go ahead and I'm going to define the other two um, sound effects too. So they're going to be numbers 65 and 66. Again, you can call them whatever you like. I'd like to give them a slightly different name to how we define the file resources within resource.res just to avoid any confusion. Okay, so we've already made things easier for ourselves by giving each sound effect number a name that we can use within our code rather than have to remember which number goes with which sound effect. Now we have to go ahead and we have to tell SUDK um, which file resource goes with which sound effect number. So let's go ahead and do that now. To do this, we're going to use a function called xgem underscore set PCM. As you can see, this requires three pieces of information. The first is the ID of the sound effect. So this is what I was talking about before. It's going to be a number of the sound effect within the game from 64 to 255. And because we've already done the definitions up there, we can simply write the um, name we gave each number rather than have to remember which number goes with each sound effect. The second piece of information was the name we gave the resource, the sound effect within resources.res. And the final and third piece will be the size of that um, file in bytes. This would all become clear as we set up each and every sound effect, so let's do that now. Instead of having to write the number 64 directly, we can simply use our um, replacement here that we created before to make things easier for ourselves. So that's the first piece of information is the ID of the um, sound effect within the game. The second piece of information is of course the file name that we gave it in resources.res. So you can simply copy the file name and paste it into the second piece of information. For the third and final piece of information, the size of that file in bytes, thankfully the C program language has a little function we can use. It's called size off. So write size off and open the brackets and the information that this little function needs is the name of the file. So simply write size off, open the brackets and put the name of the file, uh, F SFX had to look in this case, and it will just tell the function which um, how big the file is in terms of bytes. So we don't have to calculate it ourselves. If I repeat this process for the other two sound effects, the result should look like this. So at this point, we've already um, uploaded the um, sound files, the sound effect files to our ROM, and we've told SGDK which um, sound file goes with which um, sound effect number within the game. Next up, we have to go and tell the uh, SGDK when we want each sound effect to be played. And we're gonna do this within our little controls here. So when button A is pressed or button B or button C. And to do that, we're going to use another function. This time we're going to use xgm underscore start play PCM. Just like the previous function, it also requires three pieces of information. The first is the ID number of the sound effect within the game. And as usual, we can just use our define replacement rather than writing the number directly. The second piece of information required is the priority of the sound effects. Now, this ranges from 0 to 15, with 15 being the highest. And this determines what happens if you have two sound effects playing on the same uh, sound channel at the same time. It's going to determine which um, sound effect gets played and which doesn't get played. We will explore this more shortly, but for now I'll just put it as number 15. Finally, we're going to let the system know which sound channel we want to play the sound effect on. Now we have four channels available to us in the old XGM driver, and we're, the first one is normally reserved for the music. So. In normal circumstances, you want to avoid using the first sound channel. So we're going to choose between two, three, and four. So for this one here, let's choose sound channel two. I'm going to do the same now for the other two sound effects we did, but we're going to play them on sound channel three and sound channel four respectively. So the way we have things set up at the moment, uh, we play three different sound effects, depending on whether you press A, B, or C, and each sound effect is played on a different sound channel. So we should be able to play them at the same time. After saving and compiling, let's open our ROM and test things out. Adolkin! Adolkin! 
Hadouken! So that was me pressing button A in case you've ever wondered what Street Fighter 3 sound effects would sound like on the Mega Drive. Rise from your grave. Rise from your grave. Rise from your grave. Okay, so these sound effects on buttons B and C seem to be working fine too. If I now play a bad with pushing A, B and C at the same time, the system should be able to uh, let out all sound effects simultaneously since we're using different sound channels for each one, so let's test it out. And this is me hitting the same button quickly. So you can hear that we can play all three sound effects simultaneously and you can also hear that if you keep pressing the same button to play the sound, same sound effect, it will cut off the previous one and start it from the beginning. Depending on the complexity of your game, you're likely to have more than three sound effects which want to play at the same time, many different enemies on the screen and so on. So let's test out putting all three of these sound effects on the same sound channel and playing with the priority to see which one gets played and which one doesn't. I'm going to alter our code so that every single sound effect plays on the same channel, sound channel 2. For now, let's leave the priorities as they are, so they're all at 15, they're all equal priority, equally high priority. And let's compile and reload the ROM and see what the effect is. And you can hear quite clearly from that that whenever I try to press another button to play another sound effect, it pretty much cuts off the previous sound effect. Depending on these circumstances within your game, you might not necessarily want one sound effect to cut off another one. You might want the previous sound effect to continue to play, and we can change this by, we can control this much more tightly by using the priority. So in this example here, I'm going to change the priority of Hadouken to 13, so that's the lowest priority. The second highest priority will be the Michael Jackson uh, scream of 14, and the highest priority one will be the Rise From Your Grave of 15. So that means that if Rise From Your Grave is still playing, the other two uh, sound effects, they cannot interrupt it. But whereas the Hadouken can be interrupted by both of the Rise From Your Grave and the Michael Jackson scream, and the, um, the Michael Jackson scream can only be interrupted by the Rise From Your Grave sound effect. So let's save compile, open the ROM and test it out. Rise From Your Grave. Rise from your grave. I don't. I don't. Rise from your grave. So I hope everyone's now clear on how sound effects worked in the code, but how you actually implement all this in your game is entirely up to you. Taking a Castlevania game as an example, you might want all of uh, Alucard's or the main character's um, sound effects to be on channel 2 and maybe have it so that they can be, uh, you know, getting hurt is higher priority than the attack sound effect, so that if you get hurt while you're attacking, you still get the hurt sound, but again, it's up to you. Then maybe you could put all the enemies on sound channel three, and you could put the candles and the um, hearts on the sound effects on sound channel four. So that means that you get both the attack sound from Alucard and also the sound of the candle being destroyed at the same time. They won't interrupt each other. When watching a playthrough of my recent uh, Christmas Castlevania demo, I saw that the player, they dealt the final blow to death just as he was throwing the um, fire attack. And I must have coded it so that the fire attack and his final speech at the end about meeting Alucard again were on the same sound channel and the fire attack had a higher priority because when the fire attack was playing that sound effect continued to play and he Death didn't give that little speech at the end so it's very easy to make a mistake like that so try and keep close, uh, pay close attention to which sound effects are on which channel and the priorities and so on so you don't make the same mistake that I did. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.